What's going on, weirdos? It's your man Shane K. Walker here with Hollywood TV, bringing you all yet another video. We are more than halfway to the number one greatest film of all time. It has been so much fun, a bit stressful to present this list of all time greats. But, eh, someone had to do it. <laughs> Today, we add 10 more to the list as we count down from 40 to 31. As always here at Hollywood TV, we place timestamps on this modern case chapters in the description below so that you the viewer can skip ahead and control the video as you see fit without further ado let's continue the countdown number 40 ray all right ladies and gentlemen we start this portion of the countdown all with arguably one of the greatest biopics in recent memory we meet a young ray charles robinson the son of a sharecropper who is traveling to seattle using his uncanny talent in piano he gets a job playing for a nightclub. Eventually, he becomes the club's main attraction, which leads him to the Chitlin circuit and eventually a record deal. However, things become dark as he turns to drugs. Turns out, he still harbors guilt over the accidental death of his younger brother. As quickly as fame came, it seemingly became his coup de grace. Ray stars Jamie Foxx, Kerry Washington, there they are again, Clifton Powell, and Bakeem Woodbine. As of 2020, Ray holds a 79% on Rotten Tomatoes. As mentioned earlier in the season, 2004 belonged to Jamie Foxx. He became only the second man in history to be nominated for an Academy Award for both Best Actor and Best Supporting Actor behind Al Pacino. Just like Al Pacino, he will win Best Actor, but not Best Supporting Actor. And speaking of Al Pacino and Jamie Foxx, number 39, Any Given Sunday. We now take a look at the 1999 cult classic Any Given Sunday. For the sake of time, I have to keep this long story to a good minimum. The Miami Sharks, okay, that's clearly a play on the Miami Dolphins people, come on now, were once the team to beat in the AFFA. Now, they're barely making playoff contention. Coach Tony D'Amato is a two-time Pantheon Cup champion. Jack Rooney is an aging quarterback who sustains an injury. Steaming Willie Beeman enters the game and plays well. Although he's successful, Beeman stirs tension between the team, coaches, and other staff members. Beeman is benched when Rooney returns, but Rooney is again injured during the playoff game. This film has an all-star cast from all corners of entertainment. The aforementioned Al Pacino and Jamie Foxx, LL Cool J, Bill Bellamy, Cameron Diaz, Lawrence Taylor, Jim Brown, Dennis Quaid, and James Woods. And that's just naming a few. Despite the casting, the film suffered from mixed reviews. It only holds a 52% on Rotten Tomatoes. Number 38, The Sandlot. Moving to a new city and making friends is hard. It becomes even more difficult when you have limited talent on a dime. That's the premise of this 1993 classic. We meet Scott Smalls, a young man who just relocated to LA but is an outcast, clearly. Wanting to make new friends, he begins to learn to speak their language, playing baseball. Smalls sucks, however, making this transition more difficult. After learning the basics from his stepdad, he's picked up by the team's best player, Benny Rodriguez. After hitting the skin off their only baseball, Small grabs the baseball from his trophy case at his house. However, this isn't just any plain old baseball. It was autographed by Babe Ruth. Yeah, mm-hmm. This film stars Tom Geary, Mike Veter, and James Earl Jones. As of 2020, The Sandlot holds a 63% on Rotten Tomatoes. Number 37, Independence Day. Now, how was that Fresh Prince rapper guy going to fare after that little TV show ended? Well, he did go on to star in one of the highest grossing films the year his show ended, so that's how. Alien invaders have come down to Earth and, of course, are looking to take over the planet. We then meet some army-like special forces to battle the threat. Independence Day stars an ensemble cast that stars that Fresh Prince rapper guy, Will Smith, Bill Pullman, Jeff Goldblum, Robert Loja, and Vivica A. Fox. As of 2020, Independence Day holds a 67% on Rotten Tomatoes. It was nominated for two Academy Awards, winning one for Best Visual Effects. Number 36, Silence of the Lambs. We're getting to the real good stuff now, y'all. We meet FBI agent in training Clarice Starling. The agency is on the hunt for a serial killer who kills young women and removes their skin. The killer proves to be Buffalo Bill. 
this sends Starling to one of the most infamous serial killers ever, be it real or fictional, Hannibal Lecter. Lecter is a former renowned psychologist. However, he too began to kill and would eat his victims. He's the perfect inside man to take down a fellow serial killer. This film stars Jodie Foster, Annie Hopkins, and Ted Levine. Silence of the Lamb is one of the most iconic thrillers ever made. As of 2020, it holds a 96% on Rotten Tomatoes. It won five, five Academy Awards, including the victory for Best Director, Best Actor, and Best Actress. Number 35, Shawshank Redemption. A former bank is convicted of murdering his wife and her lover and is sentenced to life twice. Andy Dufresne befriends Ellis Redding, a contraband smuggler serving a life sentence. One of his friends is paroled after serving 50 years in prison. However, he can't adjust the life on the outside and soon hangs himself. The prison warden Sam Norton is laundering money. One day during a roll call, Andy's cell is empty. He escaped the night previously through a tunnel that he had been carving for nearly 20 years. The next year, Red is paroled after 40 years in jail. However, just like their friend Brooks, He's having trouble adapting to outside life. He remembered his promise to Andy and visited Buxton, where there is a cache with money in it. He then heads to Mexico and meets Andy, who is waiting for him. The film stars Tim Robbins, Morgan Freeman, and Bob Gunton. One of the most acclaimed films in history. It holds a 91% on Rotten Tomatoes. It was nominated for seven Academy Awards, the most for a Stephen King film adaptation. Number 34, The Breakfast Club. What makes this film so perfect is that it meshes people who come from different cliques, from the snobbish popular diva to the brainiac. The Breakfast Club gave insight from different points of the popularity spectrum. Soon, they all realize that they all have similar problems despite their obvious differences. It kind of gives 12 Angry Men, more on that in the next episode, vibes by confining the kids to the library the difference is they do change scenes from time to time. The Breakfast Club stars Judd Nelson, Marley Ringwald, Emilio Estevez, Anthony Michael Hall, and Ali Sheedy. As of 2020, it holds an incredible 89% on Rotten Tomatoes. Number 33, The Avengers Infinity War. One of the most expensive films ever made, Infinity War looks at the Avengers battling Thanos. Thanos has obtained one of the Infinity Stones from the planet Xander. After securing the Space Stone from the Tesseract, Thanos makes quick work of the Hulk and kills Loki. After making half the universe disintegrate, including the Avengers, Thanos peacefully watches the sunset on the planet, claiming victory? Uh, had to make this long story really short, because we're going to set this up for a later entrance, if you get what I mean. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. <laughs> the Avengers Infinity War stars Robert Downey Jr., Chris Hemsworth, Tom Holland, and Josh Brolin. Again, just to name a few. As of 2020, the film holds an 85% on Rotten Tomatoes. It was nominated for the Academy Award for Best Visual Effects. Number 32, Stand By Me. This movie was sad from start to finish. Gordon LeChance is reading in a newspaper that his longtime friend Chris has passed away. He then begins to write a story and reminisce about the time he, Chris, and their other friends, Teddy and Vern, went to see a dead body. Their adventure was that of a rocky one at best. They run across some bullies, a junkyard owner, and a dog named Chopper. The boys eventually find the body but are confronted by the same bullies. Ace and his gang said that they're going to take the body and take the credit. Chris pulls the gun that he lifted from his father's house and scares the bully away. Gordy and the others decide to notify the police via anonymous telephone call about the body. The boys then go their separate ways, for the day as well as in life. They don't remain close, just Gordy and Chris. Chris is stabbed to death in a restaurant in the present day while trying to break up a fight. Stand By Me stars Will Wheaton, Corey Feldman, Jerry O'Connell, and the late great River Phoenix. As of 2020, Stand By Me holds a 91% on Rotten Tomatoes. Before we continue, Hollywood would like to pause and recognize some honorable mentions. Number 
number 31, Toy Story 2. It's time for Andy to go to cowboy camp. He and Woody are looking forward to a great time. However, Andy accidentally tears Woody's arm during play. As a result, he's placed on the shelf with Wheezy. Woody rescues Wheezy from a garage sale, but he's eventually stolen by a toy collector. At the toy collector's apartment, Woody meets his sister Jesse, Bullseye, and Stinky Pete. In the process, he learns that he's the main character of a 1950s TV series, Woody's Roundup. The game tracks down Woody and convinces him to return. Woody eventually agrees and asks Bullseye, Jesse, and Pete to join. Bullseye and Jesse agree, but Pete furiously declines. As they head off to Japan, the toys once again save Woody, Bullseye, and Jesse. They all return home safely. Toy Story 2 stars Tom Hanks, Tim Allen, Joan Cusack, Kelsey Grammer, and the late Don Rickles. As of 2020, Toy Story 2 ties the original Toy Story, more on that one in the season finale, yeah, spoiler alert, with a 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. It was only nominated for one Academy Award for Best Original Score. Keep in mind, this predates the Best Animated Picture Award. That didn't come until 2001. Just saying. Do you all agree? Well, y'all should because you did vote on these films on Instagram. <laughs> Just saying. Anyway, if so or if not, please tell us about it in the comment section below. Yeah, we read those things and we may or may not use a screenshot of your opinion in the next video. Next Sunday, we're going to take a look at numbers 30 to 21. Yeah, y'all, we inching closer. We almost there. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe and ring that dang on bell to get all of our notifications. Until next Sunday, remember, Hollywood is a weird place. I'm your man Shane Kid Walker and this is Hollywood TV.